That I run it Everything you wanna do I already done it And I got your little boo Telling me she love me I got this one That one Damn it's gonna be a long night Hello guys, what is up? It is me, Prince of Otis, and I'm back here with another video. Today I'll be doing what if Deku is a speedster, the finale, and you may notice there's some background noise. Um, don't let it bother you. Also, I'm recording in a car right now because I have no other choice. You know, it's the only way I'll get some quiet. So my audio might be a bit different, but I really hope you guys enjoy. You know, after we finish this, we can get to what if Naruto was a speedster. And I had to re um actually rewrite that because I felt like uncomfortable with how I made everything so fast pace so i slow down a little bit and me and naruto get his powers a bit quicker and he will not be getting struck by lightning okay i'll make i'll make it more you know less noticeable you speedsters don't always have to be like struck by lightning and be stuck in a coma to get powers sometimes the speed force just finds a way to land you its powers so that's what i'm gonna do um and uh yeah let's just get right into it so we last started off with Deku and 1A passing the provisional license exam. However, Bakugo did not, and this leads him to bring Deku over to Ground Beta so they could talk. Deku then gives him a wake-up call, and then Bakugo starts to get a little better, as he showed um, this when he fought Mirio, and the uh, Mirio fought the entire class. However, as Mirio fights, Deku even beats him, even when the, even though he's using one for all very easily, actually. And soon this leads to Deku joining Nida's agency. During one of the patrols, this is when they would actually meet Iri and Chisaki, who they capture for abuse and villainous behavior, uh, as well as, you know, for distributing very addictive enhancer drug and quirk, uh, quirk cancelling bullets. Sorry about that. Now, all of these actions would be revealed to the, um, the heroes at the briefing, where Deku would ask if they might be entering a war with the villains due to what he just saw with his cosmic awareness. Are you sure about this? asked Night Eye. Well, I certainly don't have a reason to lie, responds Deku. The room would then just get quiet as for now, Aizawa hands Deku a piece of paper and Deku draws the destination, which once again impresses everyone because it was created with such accuracy. Aizawa then takes the paper from Deku and hands it to Night Eye, who then dismisses the meeting for today because he needs to figure some things out. Now, as Deku leaves and goes back to you, way things go as usual, testing your limits, trying to get stronger, you know. And um, before they would know it, a full three days would pass. And on the fourth day, all of Yue, including 1A, would be taken outside the city. As they were excited um, over uh, overlooking the city, they would be wondering what they were going to do. However, they then looked down to see that heroes were actually evacuating citizens at an incredible and fast rate. Um, they would then be, um, Deku would then be tapped on the shoulder by All Might. Can you help out? Um, yeah, sure, responds Deku. Deku would then put on his mask and he runs down, surprising one, uh, one, the 1A class as the Bakugo would then ask, Why the hell is he allowed to go down? You're hiding something, aren't you? All Might would then be surprised that he got suspicious and kind of, you know, figured, almost figured himself so fast. And he sighed as he looked to Night Eye, who then nodded. All Might then asked for the attention of the entire 1A class as he then told them, The reason why you can see we're evacuating is because... The ground below them would then start to shake as far off in the city everyone sees a gigantic quirk user named Giganto Machia. And as he was running through the city and heading for the heroes who were still evacuating the citizens, Deku, who is actually evacuating his moms and brings her far away from the city, would actually um, then hug her asking why this is all actually happening. And then she seemed nervous and could not answer. What the hell is going on, thinks Deku. The ground would then start to shake as he also sees Giganto Machia. Oh hell no. He then runs at Giganto Machia with Inko telling him to stop, but Deku was already in flash time and actually saw All Might jumping about to punch the giant in the chest. He then runs up a building, ripping up everything around him as he then jumps off it. Get the hell out of our city. He and All Might would then land a powerful blow on Giganto Machia, who actually gets sent flying and slams into a nearby forest. Deku would then land by using his tornado hands and All Might lands near him. Thank you as always, young Midoriya. He and Deku would then see a stampede of villains just rushing out towards them in a huge pack. Holy shit. The war's... The war, it's starting, thinks Deku. As he says this, heroes jump into action as some land in the area by Deku and All Might ready to fight. The same is happening in other places and Deku would start to sense this and he goes 70% as he runs forward, blowing the villains out of his way and he leaves the city to help out other cities in Japan. So as Deku is doing this, heroes would start to fight villains like Dabi and Twice who would actually split himself over a hundred times going berserk. Meanwhile, Deku would go to Hosu, Fukuoka, uh, Naruhata, all these cities containing villains that were about to attack. And then he went to Tartarus, where he put all the prisoners back in their places, saving the guards who were about to be killed just in time. 
However, as he did this in the halls of the prison, he would find all for one. Get back in your cell before I make you. So you're the infamous Izuku Midoriya. I've been dying to meet you. Well, you'll be halfway dead if you don't get back in your cell, says Deku. However, off one would then smile as from the walls would pop out metahuman dampeners that attached to Deku's legs, making him kneel to the ground in pain as he is shocked by them. <laughs> in the end, cockiness is your downfall. All the speed in the world, but you're still nothing but a filthy metahuman. Off one would then pull out a gun, pointing it at Deku who chuckles. Why don't you just stab me with those tendrils of yours and get it over with? Off one would then say, because I want the way that the fastest kid alive dies is to be by a bullet which he could easily dodge. This would piss off Deku who, is, who then starts to whisper something as off one is about to pull the trigger but then he asks, what are you mumbling, did the despair make you delirious? You can't lock up the light. What did you say? asks all for one. Deku then looks up with his eyes turning bright green. You can't lock up the light. It wants to be free. And my light won't be extinguished. As he says this, the metahuman dampeners blow up as all for one would shoot a bullet at Deku who catches it, dropping it down as he would then stand up. He starts walking towards a frustrated all for one um, as his suit cannot contain the huge amount of energy output, so it actually starts to burn off. However, as the suit burns off, Deku gets granted a new suit from the Speed Force, a green and yellow um, suit made from his electricity construct. What the hell is this? I am the symbol of fear. I will not be beaten by a teenager. However, as he says this, Deku punches him in the face, knocking him out, and he puts all for one in his cell, repairing it super fast, which is what he actually did to the other cells. Now, as Deku does this, he will be found by guards who, upon meeting him, would thank him because even with his new suit, they know that he's the one who just kept Tartarus in one piece. Who are you? asks one of the guards. My name is Lightspeed, says Deku. He would then be gone from their sight, leaving behind a trail of green lightning, and he's heading back to Musufatsu. Um, as he arrives, he sees Musufatsu actually basically ruined, but the heroes are still hanging on strong. But he, um, he actually heads to the leader of these villains, finding Shigaraki, who had been using tendrils as a way to stay up, fighting against All Might, Bakugo, and Miro, who was actually, you know, triple teaming him, meaning that he's been battered and bruised all over. And with the help of those like Aizawa, he was basically powerless, but he definitely, you know, gave them a fight. This has to stop now, thinks Deku. In an instant, Miro and All Might, as well as Bakugo, see Shigaraki be sent flying into the air, as he then gets brought back down by a streak, uh, streak of lightning, which then turns back into Deku in a new suit. Oh, Deku, says Miro. Love the new suit. Thanks, he then yells. Your leader has been subdued and I'm coming for you. Whether you surrender or not doesn't matter because in the end, you're all going to end up right back where you belong. He then disappears, spreading out through the entire city, knocking out every single villain that he could find. And he would also find Uraka about to lose Toga's trail and knocks out Toga. And then uh, he knocks out Dabi and he actually, um, yeah, he saves Todoroki from being fried and Endeavor from being fried. But um, yeah, he then takes care of every villain as um, heroes are seeing that everything is just getting better. And Deku then stops giving a hand to Aizawa, helping him up. Aizawa then thanks Deku, who then goes on to help the other heroes who might be having trouble. And soon he would be done as heroes would come out to cheer for Deku when his classmates did as well. However, as they're doing this, Giganto Makia would start to wake up with everyone panicking. Looks like I have to hit him down again, says All Might. Giganto Makia would then see Shigaraki all battered up and beaten up as he would yell, How dare you touch my mask! He would then be cut off by a punch as Deku appears right in front of him, lending a punch on his nose, and this sends Giganto Makia flying once again as everyone sees his head actually be flung back from the sheer power of Deku's punch. Deku would then run down from a building, landing safely as he says, Just shut up already, you big oaf. It's over. All by himself, thinks Gran Torino. And we're sure he has super speed, not super strength, asked Mirio. Bakugo would then say, just don't try to make sense of it, just, just don't. Now, um, just like that, the war was ended. We then cut to Deku talking to Iri and behind him are his classmates as they're telling um, uh, her how things went. But in the end, Deku just ended everything. Iri would be happy hearing that, you know, everyone was okay, but some heroes were definitely killed. Not that they told her that because she's a freaking child. And overall, everything worked out, so there's no need to focus on the negatives. So after this visit, the class would then um, step out and they say bye to each other as they go to make sure their parents are okay. And as they do, Deku goes and finds his, uh, his mom who is sitting on a chair and she hugs him with tears flowing out of her eyes. Now as they're hugging, All Might who, uh, who arrives says hi to Inko, saying that some people want to talk to Deku. Can it wait? asks Deku. 
Ome would then say, you can bring your mom if you want. This concerns both of you in a sort of way. They then look uh, at each other, wondering what that means, and they would then follow All Might outside the hospital to see a bunch of men in black, and in front of them would be a blonde woman with slick back hair who's wearing a black suit. This is the Public Safety Commission president, says All Might. Oh. Oh, says Deku. Well, this is nerve-wracking. The president would then pull out a card, kind of cutting off Deku a bit, as he puts it in front of the kid, who would then see that it actually had his name on it and his picture on it as well. He would then look at All Might who nods and Deku grabs the card, still being a bit uncertain, and he sees that it's a professional hero license. I, I'm going to be a pro hero? Already? The president would then smile saying, I had a meeting with the Hero Association and considering what you've done for all of Japan, not just our city, this much is expected. You did well in such a moment of crisis, so feel free to jump in and help whenever. After all, it is now your job. Light speed. She would then put her hand out for a handshake as Deku would shake it happily, and this makes Deku an official hero. But you still have to go to school, says All Might. We can't just pull you out of education just because you're a hero. You're still a kid. That's fine with you, right? Deku would then say, of course it is. Thank you so much. I've dreamt about this for so long. The president would then be thinking, seeing him up and close and personal, he really is just like any other kid. Except really fast. So from here on now, uh, while Deku attends school, if he was alerted by heroes uh, that were in the school or the establishment that something major was happening and he was needed, he would go into action. Or if he was just walking around um, and he saw a crime, he would take care of it. And doing hero work until Deku graduates, he would become a national hero, not just a pro hero, meaning that he was a higher rank than All Might ever was. I mean, Nar I mean, All Might was actually considered a national hero, right? So yeah, but Nar uh, but um, Deku is still stronger. And... Um, because that's because he could literally reach every country with the speed and run across the entire earth. By the time he was 25, he actually got married to Uraraka, and she was also starting with her pro career. Um, Bakugo was as well. And he started rising up the ranks as the hero Dynamite. And then soon, uh, Deku would actually, you know, get a kid. A kid named Haruki Midoriya. And he inherited his father's powers and the ability to actually reverse time, just like XS, you know, in this uh, CW Flash. But it's way more OP and he can actually control it way better. And he was set to be as great as his father. Many humans would actually show themselves uh, as most of them hid due to being afraid since most of them were being captured for becoming villains. But now the their Earth had more heroes than ever and they were much more powerful than Quirk users. This guaranteed a long period of prosperity for every new generation of the MHA universe, having a Flash born from the Midoriya bloodline as they were Earth's mightiest defenders. Now that is where I'm going to be leading the series off for good. Welcome to the end of the video, hope you guys enjoyed. Again, I hope you don't mind the audio change, I'm trying to adjust here, I moved again. Um, it's just for vacation time, you know, for the summer, by the way. You know, school's over for me, so now I'm going to be posting as much as I can. Um, but yeah, I'm in a new environment again, meaning it's going to be hard to post. This happens way too often, so, you know, bear with me. I hope you guys can still hear me well. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope you don't forget to like and subscribe. And share this anybody else who might like what ifs. Uh, the Discord is always down in the description, as always. Hit that notification bell, you know, all that jazz. And I will see you guys next time in What If Naruto Was a Speedster.